a light? A light motherboard? This is actually the same motherboard. So this is gonna be the easiest motherboard review ever. The Tai Chi light. It's so light because it doesn't have a lot of heat sinks on it. Only the ones that you really absolutely have to have. See, it's sort of the end trend is, was, to just cover your motherboard and stuff. Some people like that. I mean, look, the Carrera version from ASRock, if you want the marble look and you're going for a certain aesthetic or you're streaming or whatever, okay, yeah, I get it. But uh, things are heating up in terms of your processor, but also in terms of competition in the market. Intel 14th generation is right around the corner. And without me telling you officially, I'm telling you unofficially, it's gonna go in this socket. And this motherboard has uh, slightly improved VRM delivery, but otherwise it is exactly the same motherboard. And actually really you could make the argument that from a power delivery standpoint, you're basically already there. Tai Chi Lite and the Tai Chi, basically same exact identical motherboard. The rear IO might look familiar. The rest of the motherboard, the heatsink, everything else might look familiar. Same PCIe Gen 5 support. This is spookily familiar. The competition's getting very intense, and there are a lot of alternatives for buyers in the market, and PCIe Gen 5. So, what do you give up when you give up whatever it is with the Tai Chi Lite for the more aggressive pricing? It's really just the plastic and the heat sinks. That's it, it's literally it. If it were me, I would buy this motherboard over the older version of the Tai Chi for any cost savings. Even if it was only $10, I would probably buy the other, I would probably buy this version over the other version. So if you get an LGA 1700 CPU, 12th, 13th, or 14th generation, this motherboard is definitely gonna be on your short list for motherboards that support those CPUs. I mean, yeah, okay, 14th generation comes out and it's the new hotness and everybody wants it, but have you seen how aggressive the pricing is for the i9 or the i7? And again, i7, like the 12700K in this motherboard, especially if you get a deal on that processor, that is a pretty much unstoppable gaming rig. All right, so we're gonna do a build with this board and we're also gonna take a look at the T700. This is a PCIe Gen 5 SSD from Crucial and it is 11.7 gigabytes per second. And this is also gonna give us a chance to show off ASRock's active cooling fan thingy for their PCIe Gen 5 SSDs. Because let me tell you, 11.7 gigabytes doesn't come cheap in terms of the heat dissipation requirements. But 11.7 gigabytes per second is substantially faster than the absolute theoretical maximum of PCIe Gen 4 SSDs, which is exactly eight gigabytes per second. That's the read speed. That's gonna matter mostly when we're talking about level loads inside games or anytime that you're reading an absurd amount of information from your SSD into memory. So playing games, loading a level, that kind of thing. The other aspect of your SSD that has to do with how fast it feels is something called Q-Depth 1. Covered a lot of topics on that with Alan Malventano, storage expert, and, and, and others, and we, you know, we've done our own videos. Q-Depth 1 is how quickly a drive like this can serve. It's like, I just need this one block. I just need this other block. Okay, now I need, I need another a third block. A lot of the time, the access pattern is a program doesn't know what block it needs until it gets the block that it needs right now, and then it'll know the next block and the next block and the next block. A lot of the time there's not optimization to just say, I'm gonna need these 4,000 blocks from disks, go and get it. And so that Q-Depth 1 performance, how quickly it can get a block in and out, hasn't really changed much for flash memory. In fact, like most things, like memory latency, generally gotten worse since the DDR days. Yes, the original DDR1, the original DDR days. We've experienced much the same thing with flash storage, from single level cells to two bits per cell to, you know, now we're on four bits per cell. The amount of time that it takes to service that single request hasn't really changed much, and if anything, has gotten worse. And so software on these drives try to mitigate that and deal with that as much as possible. Because this is Gen 5, you do get some benefit from having that Gen 5 interface, which is very, very slightly lower latency but it's still gonna be outperformed by other technology. I mean, Intel killed Optane, because I guess they couldn't get the density. I don't no one's they've been kind of tight-lipped about it. But you know, Optane, where it's a different, basically phase change memory, but on die, 
But when we're talking about phase change mem memory, reading that one or zero from the cell where it's stored is insanely way faster than the analog to digital converter you're basically dealing with when we're talking about physical flash memory, which is one of the reasons why the latency of Optane is still, even though it's Gen 4, about half of what you experience with Gen 5. That's just FYI. You don't really need to know that to know that this drive is still absurdly fast. And when we're talking in terms of latency, it's better than most NAND drives. It's not better than the best NAND drives, but it's pretty darn good. And it is insanely way cheaper than anything that is actually insanely way faster. So good job, Crucial. All right, let's get this put in a system and take a closer look uh, with a 13th generation CPU, of course, because hey, 14th gen, uh... I'm sure we'll be seeing this motherboard again come 14th gen, don't worry. But for now, 13th gen. 13900K, as a matter of fact. Well, the performance numbers are in from the Tai Chi Lite, and it's better than the regular Tai Chi. Yeah, actually, in a lot of tests, it was maybe 1%, a half a percent better. That may be down to driver updates and everything else, but holy crap, it's fast. We also tested using the Crucial Gen 5 SSD, so maybe that helped things a little bit, although that should make a difference in frame rate in your games or, or anything like that. We were running a 13900K for all of our testing, not the KS, because the K that I have, one of the Ks, actually does better than the KS that we had, which is weird, but that's something different and, and fine. It seemed like the system was more able to deliver higher wattages, at least from Hardware Info 64. Hardware Info 64 was reporting uh, wattages during like the boost phase, five to 10 watts higher. So this may be down to microcode updates or BIOS updates or general 13th gen improvements. You know, maybe 13th gen improvements paving the way for what's coming with 14th generation. 72 E cores and eight P cores. Uh, eventually we're gonna get to a point where we've got, uh, you know, two monster cores, eight P cores, and then eight E cores. I bet you, I bet you that's where we're headed. Maybe not, probably not for 14th gen, but probably before too long, because what else are you gonna do? I mean, it's already kind of unbalanced. And, <laughs> you know, unhinged can be a good thing too. Tai Chi Lite, there's no reason to buy the Tai Chi over the Tai Chi Lite, and I suspect that's why uh, stocks have been dwindling. I couldn't help but notice the last time I was at Micro Center that, hmm, look at that. You could buy the Tai Chi Lite right now and use your 12th or 13th gen CPU with it. Huh. And if you're gonna use a Gen 5 SSD, you're probably better off with the giant heat sinks anyway. So, something to consider there. I can't wait to revisit this motherboard when 14th Gen CPUs actually launch, but for now, I really don't see a downside with these light motherboards. Like, what's not to love? You've got a little bit beefier VRM, everything else is a little bit better. It's got lessons learned built into it. It's like the 2.0 revision of any board. There's no, there's no reason not to buy it. It's like, oh, it, doesn't have the giant heat sinks and plastic stuff. I would have probably wanted that to begin with. I'm Whittle, this is level one. It's been a quick look at the Tai Chi Lite and a fun build in our fractal system. Take a look at that. Let's do some more tests on this, but hey, for now it's probably good. I'm Wendell, this is level one. I'm signing out and you can find me in the level one forums.